everything that y'all uh, suffered me through my preaching and, and just listen to what I had to say and what the Lord gave me. Uh, it's a blessing. I appreciate all the encouraging words. Uh, it means a lot to me that our family members come out. My mom and uh, Amy's cousins came out today. And, and it just means a lot that uh, I got a church family that stands behind me and, and, and is an encouragement to me and, and, and just, uh, just a blessing, just a real blessing uh, that I go to a church that will give me the liberty to preach and, uh, and especially a fellow like me, because there's a lot of places that wouldn't let, wouldn't let me preach because of my background and previous reputation. <laughs> but we talked about the last couple of days, we talked about where are you the first night, and we talked about, you know, where are you in relation to the Lord's return, and where you might stand, and where you fit in, and, and where you should be in relation to that return. And last night we talked about who told you and tried to be an encouragement to you about who told you that this wasn't the word of God and, and who told you, who told you. God didn't tell you those things, I'll tell you that. If you didn't get it, get that on last night, God didn't tell you. And what I want to talk to you tonight, today, this morning about is why. That's, we talked about the two questions that, that God asked man, where are you and who told you. Today I'd like to talk to you about why. In Judges 6.13, Judges 6.13, It says, And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of, of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Father, I do thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, of being able to preach here at Orchard Street Baptist Church, Father. Lord, I ask that you help get me out of the way, Lord, and just take possession of this little body, Lord. Not that I'm worthy, Lord, just that I'm willing. Lord, I ask, Lord, you help me, Lord, to bring forth the message that you've given me, Lord. And let me preach it, Lord, in a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. I thank you, Father, for a perfect book. I thank you for saving me, Lord, that day back there in the prison, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for having mercy on me and sending some of my way to tell me about Jesus Christ. Lord, I Yes, Lord, you just help us focus on this word for about the next hour, Lord. And Lord, may your name be magnified and glorified in all things. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Like I said, we talked about where are you and who told you. Today we're going to talk about why. Why is this all happening to me? If the Lord is with me, why does all these things happen? There's a lot of different ways we can go with this message, but there's, you know, there's a lot of questions that man always asks. Whenever we get in a situation where things are bad, we say, why, Lord? Why does this happen to me? Why me? Why? Job 23, Job 23, verses 1 through 10. It says, then Job answered and said, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, Lord. It's just so heavy, I can't bear it all. Oh, that I know where I might find him. Oh, if I only knew where God was in this time. Where is God? Is he an absent God? Where is he? That I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. If I could only ask God why and he can explain it to me, I could just handle it and go through it. I can take it, Lord, if you just tell me why, Lord, is this all happening? Why, Lord? Why? Oh, I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. The Bible says in Romans 5, 34, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience and experience, and experience hope. Oh, we got to hold on with the hope of Jesus Christ during those times. Why, Lord, is this happening? And in verse 6, in, in Job, it says, Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. He could give me strength. I could just do it, Lord, if you just tell me why is this going? Why is this happening to me? I could just keep going, Lord. Amen. And in verse 7, it says, There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. 
And in verse 8 it says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself from me on the right hand, and I cannot see him. Lord, I'm looking for you. I'm praying, and I can't get a hold of you. You're not in front of me. You're not beside me. God, where are you? God, where are you? Oh, I've had, you know, I'm relatively young. I'll be 35 tomorrow. But I've seen some hard times in my short life. And I've been, and in some of those times I was saved. And I didn't understand why God would let me go through that. Not that I'm special, but I wasn't bothering anybody. Why do I have to suffer these things? Why, Lord? Why? Oh, in verse 10. There's a reason why. But he knoweth the way that I take. Oh, my friend, the Lord knows what you're going through today. The Lord knows everything that you're suffering. The Lord's there with you. You might not feel like he's there, but don't base it on your feelings. Base it on faith. Faith that Jesus Christ said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be through you, with you through the hard times, through the good times, through all the times until he comes back. And then you'll get to be with him if you're saved. But he knoweth the way that I take. The Lord is not an absent God. He knows the way that you take. But then it goes on to say in verse 10, when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold. Sometimes the troubles come just to purify you, to get you where God wants you to be so that you reflect the light of God. Sometimes he just has to weed some things out of your life. Sometimes we don't realize those are the things that we need weeded out. <laughs> oh, if I could just tell you some stories. <laughs> Some things that I didn't know about. But the Lord made them clear to me because I prayed that the Lord would make them clear. But he would try you as, and you'd come forth as gold. I know you've heard me talk about this and I know some people and I've watched some things on TV that Discovery Channel sometimes does have some good things. Most of it's trash. It ain't worth two cents. But they talk about when they purify gold, they heat it up and they scoop off the impurities. They heat it up and scoop off the impurities until that goldsmith can see his own reflection. And that's what God wants in us. Sometimes he has to burn out those impurities so that we can reflect the light of God in our daily lives. The, boy, the Lord says he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Why, Lord? Mark 4. 35 and 41. Mark 4, 35 and 41. I believe this is another reason why. Another reason why. Mark 4, 35 and 41. And the Bible says, And the same day when, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Sometimes it's for the other little ships. Sometimes it's for those little ships to see how the big ships fare the storms. You know, the little ships can be a lot of different things. They can be your children. They can be your neighbor. They can be your friend, your husband, your wife, your uncle, aunt. I mean, the little ships, new Christians, old Christians. Sometimes it's because the little ships... And it says, and the Bible says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the wave beat into the ship so that it was full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the, the sea, Peace, be still. And, wind ceased there, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto